classic hallux rigidus, um, swelling around the MTP joint. Uh, if you look, dorsiflexion of the other toe is 90 degrees. This one limited really to, I mean, less than about 50 degrees. Uh, classic findings. Uh, I see the extensor hallucis longus tendon. Some people will cheat a little bit more here for cosmesis. I find that makes it hard to get to the lateral side. So I'll, I'll just cheat to the medial border of the extensor hallucis longus. So once we've done that, basically make an incision, just going off that medial border of the extensor hallucis longus. Once I get that, basically I can see the extensor hallucis longus sitting. It's in its sheath. You can see it sitting right along here. And for me, if I can keep it in the sheath, I prefer to do that. I know that my dorsal medial cutaneous nerve is gonna be way over here in the more medial side. So what I find is if I can keep the extensor hallucis longus in its sheath, I just go on the medial edge of that, I literally go straight down to bone. And I'm gonna go right over the joint. And again, you'll notice I'm keeping, I'm going basically right down through the capsule. And, and, and I like to do this, I, I guess it's kind of like, uh, I think of it as an upside down knee replacement, um, where the patella actually sits on the bottom. And the reason I like to do that is because I take the whole thing down, you'll notice I'm taking it down as a sleeve. And again, what you'll notice is as I'm doing this, I'm literally staying right on the bone um, so that I can pull the whole thing down as one sleeve. Now, and this is a nice little trick so that I can keep everything in a sleeve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up like this. And, and when I pull up, I can actually see the plantar surface. So here's the uh, cartilage defect, the damage. And so what I like to do is then take the knife and I go right into the crystal. So this is the groove for the medial sesamoid. And what I find is if I can get my knife in there, I can actually peel and I'm, my knife stays right up against the bone. So I'm literally peeling it down off that medial side. And once I do that side, I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So here's the other groove for the sesamoids. Again, I put my knife in, and I'm literally gonna just come right around, and I'm literally scraping the metatarsal head. The idea is now, I've essentially degloved the area. So what I'm actually doing at this point is I'm taking my gouge, I'm getting it past the articular surface of the metatarsal head. One of the things that trick that can help is plantar flexing the great toe down and it gives you this nice space. So now you can actually see that I can actually get behind the head of the metatarsal, and then I'm literally gonna run this up. And you'll see that I'm essentially degloving, but I'm degloving it as a soft tissue sleeve. But I'm not hurting the articular surface plantarly. And a lot of times, just by doing that, you can start to get more motion. And so then, to make sure I get everything released, what I'll do then is, is for those who, who do knee replacements, this is kind of the femur and this is the tibia and I put my homin right behind the surface and if I pull forward, it pulls the cartilage of the phalanx out towards me. Now what I can do is take my knife and literally just peel the plantar attachments and the medial lateral attachments to the phalanx. And so just like in a knee replacement, if you, if you release these, everybody worries that you're gonna have a cock up toe and I can tell you after a lot of these, hundreds of these, you don't get that. And the reason I believe is even though you're releasing them, just like in a hamstring, you, um, they, they have a place to scar back down. So you can actually see that I have released the whole phalanx for almost probably a centimeter of its attachments. Now when you do that, you can get 90 degrees of dorsiflexion, so the toes, the big toe comes up at the same length. You have to do the soft tissue releases. If you don't do the soft tissue releases, you're not gonna get, um, you're not gonna get a good outcome because this is a disease. If you'll notice, the cartilage surface that's been damaged is a lot of it's the, the medial side here, but if you'll notice, 
it all it goes almost down to the plantar surface. Now the grooves themselves are in pretty decent condition for the sesamoids, but she's completely worn off the medial side of her metatarsal head for quite a bit. And then the other thing I'll decide is whether I need to do a, a total toe or just a partial. And, and if you look here, um, you'll see that there's a lot of ebernated bone along the whole medial side here. And if you took that off, she, she would be unstable. And so we just want to resurface this. And so she's kind of a perfect candidate for a, a total toe replacement. So if you think about it, this is your guide. So this is your footprint. This is gonna be exactly the surface area that that implant is gonna cover. What I'm gonna do is put my footprint so that when I set it down on there, that's where my implant's gonna sit. So I, I hold that there first, and then I'm gonna take the guide pin, and then I put it down through, and that says, yep, that's right where I want it. See, the nice thing is now I have exactly where I wanna be. Once I have that, Lori helps me by basically saying I'm going down the shaft of the metatarsal. So now I know where my footprint's sitting and now my guide pin is gonna go right down the shaft. And you see Lori's adjusting me because she's watching from that direction. And when I look at a side view, I can see that it looks like I'm going down the, down the, the, the length of the metatarsal. I might be a little dorsiflex and we'll see. But now we can check an x-ray. So when we bring in the x-ray, and I think when you first start doing these, it's a good idea to check x-ray, make sure you're happy with where your wire's sitting in the metatarsal. And you can see on that view, I'm straight down the metatarsal shaft. And then if we check a quick lateral, and so I'm really happy. Once I'm happy with pin placement, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill, and this is gonna be setting our post. Now you'll notice that this, this uh, drill actually has two uh, diameters. There's a more narrow one and a more uh, a larger one. When you drill with the uh, narrow one, you have to push pretty hard to get it. Once this larger diameter drill part catches, it goes very quickly and it actually will try to pull you in. So you have to be careful with that. And you'll watch as I do that. And you can see I'm, I'm pushing and it looks just like a regular drill. But watch what happens now. It literally goes in very, very quickly and very easily. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill until, if you look, you'll notice that my bit is flush with my plantar surface. Then I'm gonna take a tap. The tap actually has a black laser line and that black laser line as I tap. Now on this side, you can tap pretty quickly because it's soft metaphyseal bone. But you'll notice as I tap, I'm watching that black laser line and I'm making sure that that black laser line is flush with the plantar surface. Then I can actually put in my uh, post. Now my post, this is the post, this is the screwdriver. The screwdriver also has a black laser line. And so what we're gonna do is actually put the post in and then we're gonna go down until that black laser line again is flush with my plantar surface. Now, once I have this in and I'm happy where it's at, some people, if you have a very long first metatarsal compared to your second and you wanna shorten it, we call that decompression. And so I can actually turn, and I'm gonna take it off because I love my position right there. I can actually, with the screwdriver on, I can actually turn a quarter, of an, a quarter turn. And when I do that, that's one more millimeter in. So for every quarter turn, I can actually shorten this metatarsal because I'm going to continue to drive this in. Uh, I can shorten it. So if I turned it a half a turn, I would shorten the first metatarsal by about two millimeters. Once I've done that, then I'm going to take my pin out. I have to determine what the shape of the implant is. So the center of that post actually has a taper post and we're going to literally fit that taper in so it's nice and snug and it's a nice uh, seat. This is the measuring device, and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, and what I like to do is I like to look at where my medial and lateral sesamoids are gonna sit, and I'll just literally take this and I'm gonna push it right down onto the articular surface where the lateral sesamoid would articulate. And then I'm gonna look up here and measure, and that says right around four and a half. So we're gonna go with the 
Once we do that, I'm going to replace the guide pin back in. When you start this reamer, you want to start it off the bone and have it going fast. This is a very, very aggressive reamer. The last thing you want to do is put it against the head and start the reamer because the teeth are sharp and you can rip the metatarsal head off. The taper post actually has a stop, so it will stop me from going any deeper. And, and so as I go, I'm going to put very, very gentle pressure. And you'll, not, you'll notice that as I've been doing that, it just started to make the mark. Once I get it going, then I can put more pressure. So you can notice I'm putting more and more pressure. There's no more bone to remove there. The dorsal reamer has a tendency to not be as aggressive, and so I will do, I'll take a rongeur and I'll bite some of my dorsal spur off so that it doesn't take me nearly as long to ream that area off. Remember, I'm going to replace this whole area, so this is kind of my chylectomy. I take this out, and then I have this reamer here, and again, I check. It says 4.5, because there's also one that's 3.5, and you want to make sure you get the right one for the implant you're going to use. This also has a tapered post right in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that fits in there first. Once that fits in, I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna push right on this little silver dot. What it's gonna do is make sure that my uh, tapered post doesn't kick out of the implant. I rotate this around so that I am actually pointing at 12 o'clock in my uh, Basically, the crystal between the two sesamoids is at six o'clock. That's gonna make sure that my implant is in a good position. I then take a rongeur, and I'm just gonna get off any of the, any more dorsal material that might still be sticking there, because I want this to be a nice smooth surface on the top. I'm now gonna take my trial implant. This is the 4.5, one by 1.5 implant. I'm gonna put that on, right inside the post so it sits in its place. And so that's gonna tell me that's how my implant's gonna look. Now, I don't wanna leave cartilage on either side that might potentially become arthritic and have a problem. We wouldn't do it with a knee replacement, so I'm not gonna do it here. My thumb is gonna sit right in where the medial sesamoid's gonna sit. And I don't wanna take where the medial sesamoid's gonna sit out because that'll give it stability. So all I'm gonna do is take my imp a cut and I'm gonna take a saw. I'm gonna take a saw and I'm gonna cut off any extra bone on each side. The, you can see that the articular surface plantarly looks great and then it comes straight up to the implant and it's all one nice smooth flow and we'll see that in a little bit. So they have this as a guide to help you if you're gonna do the uh, phalangeal side setting it on, but it's been my experience that most of the time, when you can put this on, and this groove is gonna be dorsal, start it a little bit, now you have an idea where your hole's gonna be, but once you have a good idea where your hole's gonna be, then I like to take the toe, oh, wait, I'm gonna take it from you, thank you, and you'll see, once I have my starting hole, then I wanna make sure it's right down the, the shaft of the phalanx. And how I know that I'm probably in a pretty good spot is there's a black laser line, and that black laser line is almost down with the, uh, with the surface. And so I'm probably in a pretty good spot. On this side, I always do an x-ray to make sure. Now, I'm also gonna check a lateral. I'm all the way down to the end, and so I'm actually really nicely in the shaft where I wanna be. Once I know where my pin place and I'm happy with my pin placement, we're gonna do the next drill. Now drilling on the phalangeal side is completely different. I like to hold the toe and pinch it, and the reason is I can control it while I'm drilling. When you drill, you have to push pretty hard. See how quickly it jumped down in? Because now I'm in the shaft. Now you'll notice that this reamer has a different shape um, this is very wide because this is just going to ream out the surface. So now, give me a pickup, Dave. <clears throat> when you see where I stopped with the reamer, here is the uh, lateral edge of her phalanx, and you can see my reamer is almost perfectly flush with that lateral side. 
And so that makes me happy that I'm in a pretty good position for resurfacing. Got a little bit of articular cartilage left. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. You can actually see how that hard subchondral bone, I don't wanna puncture that subchondral bone because if I puncture that subchondral bone, it gets incredibly soft very quick and you're gonna have no fixation. So I, I'm kind of happy where I'm at, I'm gonna stop because I'd rather err to the side of having a small amount of cartilage and I can always scrape that off with uh, uh, something, but then to puncture that subchondral bone. Because if I puncture that subchondral bone, I'm gonna have a very poor fixation in my post. Now, this is the tap. This side you tap very carefully and very slowly. And the reason is you have a black laser line. The black laser line is just like that last reamer. I wanna stop <clears throat> once this black laser line is flush with my uh, whatever side of my phalanx is normal because this is going to determine the depth. As I tap, you'll notice that I do this the old AO technique. I quarter turn in, quarter turn back. You want to slowly do this tap and the reason is if you think about it, we're going to be going right into the diaphysis of the proximal phalanx and the last thing you want to do is crack it because it's just like putting a wedge in a log. My black line is flush with that lateral cortex. I'll just take off the extra spurs on her bone, his bone, and you'll notice that I've scraped off that wee little bit of articular. So now we have truly just subchondral bone exposed in all, everywhere. Once I do that, then I'm gonna take this out. Now, the new phalangeal post, it does not have a hole in it because we don't want wear particles getting behind it. So you, you can't, when you put this in, you have to be very careful. So what I do is I take it and I'm gonna put it right in the hole that I tapped. And the first thing I do is go backwards and watch the implant very closely. As I rotate, it clinks in. When it clicks in, as I go counterclockwise, that tells me I'm in the threads exactly how I wanna be. Now I can go forward because I'm right where I tapped. And the idea is to create a nice seal against the bone so that it's nice and snug fixation. I then take this off and now I have my two implants. Now I'm gonna do my trial for my polyethylene. And so when I put this in, I wanna put it in so that that actual uh, notch in the, implant, uh, in the polyethylene trial literally splits the toenail in half. So when I look, that's gonna go straight down her toenail. I then put my thumb on and I'm gonna reduce it. And I'm gonna look at my motion and I'm gonna look at what I've got. I'm gonna make sure that her capsule's not caught in the way or anything. So there's her medial capsule that we peel down. Here's her lateral capsule. So I'm making sure that the capsule's not in the way anymore. Then I'm gonna check my motion. Am I stiff? Am I not stiff? And so for her, I'm gonna check and I'm gonna look at my motion. Remember, I wanna make sure that when I'm doing her motion, I can get her up to 90 degrees easily. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm noticing she's a little tight and I have to figure out, is it because of just soft tissues or is it because I need to decompress? If I'm really tight, I could actually even take the uh, cap off of here, pick up, say I'm really, really tight and I only have the one millimeter in. I can actually take my cap off. I could put my screwdriver back in. I could actually put it over this. I could actually then turn it like we talked about earlier. I could turn it a quarter turn. I could turn it um, a half a turn, however many millimeters I wanna go in. And then I would have to put my guide back in, ream again, put my trial implant in. Um, in her, it's more soft tissue than anything. And so when I come in, I put my implant back on. That's how you would decompress if you were still really tight. Now this is the interesting part. When I take her, I can actually get her up 90 degrees. So I take her to ankle, I dorsiflex her. I'm putting as much tension on the FHL that I can and I can come up. And she comes up just as high on that toe as she does all her other toes. And so I'm happy. So the one thing you wanna do is after you have finished everything and you're getting ready to put in your implants,
I'm actually going to distract the toe. I'm going to look underneath at the sesamoids. So I'm just going to make sure that I pull this down really hard and then I'm going to take my irrigation because the last thing you want to do is leave any debris or particles in the plantar surface. So I'm just going to wash this out really good, make sure there's no debris anywhere. And now here's my final component. I've already got it reamed, told me where I've got to go. So I just take this taper post, put it in the post, uh, uh, the taper post is in there, I put the um, taper that's on the implant. To seat the two of them, this is just like a total hip. Lori's going to hit it a few times. And you just have to gently hit it because it's a taper, a Morse taper. It'll lock itself into position. You can grab it, see if it's going to pop off, and it doesn't. Now we're going to put in our final polyethylene. The polyethylene is designed to snap into place. Once you snap it into place, it should not rotate. If you think it's in place and it's rotating, it's not locked in. This thing has a perfect radius of curvature to match the curvature of the metatarsal head. And so when you put this in so that the notch is on the top, you're guaranteed that it's going to be a perfect fit between the two. So I look at her toenail. I'm going to split her toenail right down the middle and go right down, and that tells me where the dorsal is. So I want to make sure that that groove matches that. Once I do that, I grab onto the toe and I'm going to push. And you heard that click. That means it's locked into place now. And you have to push pretty hard. Now I'm going to take my capsule, make sure I'm happy. And I kind of like that. I'm going to check my motion. My motion with the ankle dorsiflex comes up 90 degrees, so the toe comes up great. So I'm really happy with that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is check alignment. So we're gonna put her foot down, and we're gonna see how it looks with her bearing weight. I'm actually taking my hand and I'm pushing down on the dorsum of her foot as if she was bearing weight. And what I wanna do is make sure that those components are sitting where they're supposed to. And when you look, You'll see the components are sitting kind of nicely uh, and they align. I'm then going to take my finger and put it underneath her toe. Oop. And I'm going to pretend that she's starting to uh, go up. In other words, she's going to start dorsiflexing. As they do that, I go into fluoro and I'm going to come back down. And I'm going to go into fluoro. Picture there. And I'm making sure as I dorsiflex, Picture there. You'll notice that those components are staying aligned. And so basically we're done uh, with this case. And then the last part of the operation, again, I'm just gonna wash it out one final time. And you can imagine, because we now have this implant in and it's well reduced, here's the capsule on the medial, on the lateral side, and here's the capsule on the medial side, and you can see she's got a little bit of redundancy. So we can actually take a little bit of this redundancy off. Scissors is fine. Yep. And I'm just going to take this little bit of redundancy here. And now what Lori's going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to bring this back down to where it was. And you'll notice we're being, she's very careful, and we're careful not to sew in the extensor hallucis longus. It's actually over here on the side. And so we're literally just closing capsule. And that once that's back down where it belongs, then just a simple skin closure, and we're basically done. I've checked it, I'm happy. She's in great alignment. They all line up nicely. I've checked my motion. I know I've got great motion. Um, it comes all the way up to 90 degrees, I already know that. Um, and then uh, uh, we're basically done.